So there's always a lot of questions about um, getting access to the log files, the various log files that are uh, kept by the APM and by the PixHawk. Um, I know I had quite a few and uh, there's a number of very good sites um, that you can go to. The most obvious is, is APM Copter and uh, if you look for downloading and analyzing your flight logs, you'll see that Randy McKay uh, has created uh, one or two videos here that go through the process of looking at the logs, and he talks about what the telemetry values are and, and everything else, which is, is really nice. And then, of course, the rest of the article discusses it in some degree. <clears throat> um, I wanted to demonstrate a couple of things, uh, specifically around the PixHawk and the Mac, and also around... Um, not having the aircraft um, with us, uh, so having a log file that's either mailed to you from one of your team members that, that you have uh, disconnected um, from the aircraft. So I pulled the memory card out of the aircraft in this case and I mounted it um, on the Mac and uh, you can see that the memory card has an APM directory even though this is from a PixHawk and a logs directory and then inside are all the bin logs. Now the bin log format for those who are on a Mac is not readable by, at least at this time, is not readable by the APM planner that uh, the Q ground control um, program that runs on the Mac. Uh, so you'll need to convert it. Now once you've got it converted to a log file, uh, then you can use it in APM um, planner on the Mac, but it, it doesn't, in my opinion, do quite as uh, well as mission planner does. Um, but unfortunately for Mac users, that requires Windows. Um, I run Windows and VMware, um, so I'll, I'll show that and how to convert these, and then we'll just take a quick peek at the log data itself. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on that because Randy does that really well here, and then uh, I'll show uh, a, an FPV replay in Google Earth using one of the log files. So let me switch over to Windows. So I have uh, two of the log files that I've copied over, and we'll just use this later one here. And I'm running Mission Planner. Um, if you mount the disk directly in Windows, then you can just access it. And as Randy will co covers in those other videos and other people, if you're connected uh, with the U USB cable to your aircraft, to your flight controller, then you can access the logs directly. Um, but sometimes they're mailed to you, or you just don't have that option. So uh, I'm going to uh, click on Terminal and inside Mission Planner and then I'm going to hit Log Download. And the first thing it's going to do is try to talk to the flight controller which isn't there so it gets, a, gets an error. Uh, however it brings up the window anywhere way and uh, this is where it would list the logs that were real-time on your, on your flight controller. Uh, but in this case I want to go down here to where it says bin to log. Now if you're a Mac user or if you're a PixHawk user and you're on a Mac, this is what you're looking for to convert it, either to read it in APM Planner or to just use it uh, um, later. So in this case we're going to go ahead and convert it. And it asked me where I want to put them, so I'm going to put them back on the desktop. And I'm just going to call it the same thing. So it creates a log file. Now my file extensions are turned off under Windows, but this is a 95.log. Uh, and, and that's it. So then I could drag that over to the Mac again and load it up in um, APM Planner, and that would be fine. I could also uh, keep using it in here. So right now I want to go ahead and just first convert these. These two options create um, a markup language for Google Earth as well as a GPS exchange file that can be used for other programs. And so uh, the first one is the recreate uh, KML. And if I pick the log file now, uh, it will convert it to a GPX and a KMZ archive for Google Earth. And these are the raw, or I should say the markup language and GPS exchange data that would be used for uh, plotting it out uh, in a mapping program. And the KMZ is specific to Google Earth, as far as I know. Um, the other one that's really cool is the first person KML. So I'm going to do that as well. 
so we can use it. And that will create a somewhere, there it is, a another KMZ file which will replay in real time more or less the mission from the first person point of view of the aircraft. Uh, which then I'll show you how that mixes with the actual uh, footage shot just just as a cool little thing. So what I'm going to do now is drag those uh, just those KMZ files over to the and the log file over to the Mac and I'll load up APM Planner and we can see the difference. Um, so there we go. And uh, let's do the log file too. It'll let me sometimes it doesn't like to let me drag it. Everything. All right, so there's the log file. <clears throat> All right, so now we can dismiss Windows. We're back on the just the Mac itself. Uh, now, uh, if I before I get into the Google Earth stuff, uh, we'll just end with that because it's more just eye candy and it's an interesting replay. Uh, the log file itself, if we load APM Planner now, which is loading on my other window, just one second, um, then you can go to load log uh, and then uh, go back to the desktop and the log file and open so that's awesome anyway it's a similar view with all the commands that are being logged and, and so forth as you saw in APM or I'm sorry mission planner um, but it's not uh, I don't think it's as well done or not quite as clear uh, but it is native, so if you're doing the analysis on your Mac, you could you could use the Mac to do it. Okay. Now, these KMZ files that I exported are interesting too. The first one that I did was this uh, log 95.kmz. If I click on that, uh, you can see that it'll actually start Google Earth and position itself roughly where the in the city the flight field was, this happens to be in Idaho, and uh, now if I drill down, see it added temporary places, and it added my KMZ file and log, you can see that there's two, uh, there's a, there's two flight modes in here, there's a, let me expand this, there's a stabilize and a loiter, and it breaks it up by flight mode by default, as far as I can tell, so if I click on either one of these, it'll zoom in to the flight field a relatively high altitude and then I can so I'm scrolling the mouse wheel to kind of zoom down more and you can see what it did was it put a ribbon uh, they're both checked and you see it put a ribbon and the orange ribbon represents the stabilized flight and the the um, yellow ribbon represents flying around loiter so this is a flight my daughter who's 10 years old was flying a, our larger one of our hexcopters and she was just sort of learning. Uh, I took it off in stabilize mode, and which is the orange, if you can see it. Oops, I'm playing G Google Earth gymnastics here in just a second. So I took it off in stabilize mode and went up to you know a few meters, and then switched into loiter mode, and then she flew it around in loiter mode. I'm not sure how to get oh, there we go. Uh, and then she flew it around in loiter mode uh, and then landed it over here. So we took off here and kind of flew around. Um, and so this is an overhead view. It's useful I suppose if you want to measure things. It's not giving you a lot of raw telemetry data. Obviously you'd want to use the other log file for that, but it's neat to see. Uh, it gives you a good overview of what's going on uh, and what modes you've flipped into and so forth. Um, if I clear this and load the other one, I think this is kind of a fun one, especially for people who have cameras mounted. This is actually going to load an executable script uh, as it drops down, uh, and it will f fly the mission in more or less real time as it was flown from a first-person point of view from the aircraft, which is kind of cool. So um, the only data here is just the path, uh, and that's it. So it's a camera view of the path as it's flying around, and it's pretty detailed. Now, there, there's obviously a camera gimbal on the aircraft itself, and we're not seeing that 
uh, Aaron's a new pilot, so she's um, banging around on the sticks pretty good. But uh, you can see that it's that's essentially what we saw. Um, the images on the ground are obviously 2D, uh, but it's pretty cool. So I'll cut in here um, the FPV, or sorry, the video shot from the quadcopter, or the hexcopter in this case, um, and you'll see that it lines up fairly well with what's going on in the, uh, in the, f in the Google Earth replay. So here's her landing, and that's it. So then it restarts. So it's pretty pretty neat, and we can kind of flip back up here. It's really doing anything to turn this off. So I'll cut that in. Um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, thanks a lot.